Aronson, the social animal. Prejudice. Many people believe that racism and prejudice are things of the past. However, recent events show that it still exists in many forms. Legislation has opened doors for women and minorities, but prejudice still lingers. Hate crimes and other forms of prejudice may be less frequent, but they still exact a heavy toll on victims. For example, in 2004, a black firefighter was subjected to racial harassment by his colleagues. He filed a lawsuit and won, but it highlights the ongoing issue of racism in the workplace. Racism also takes more subtle forms, like during Hurricane Katrina. Photos of African Americans wading through chest high water, dragging hefty bags full of supplies, show the disparities in access to basic necessities. Studies show that while the percentage of people admitting to prejudices is dropping, it still exists. We need to continue to acknowledge and address the issue of racism in our society. What is prejudice? Prejudice is a problem that affects everyone. It's a hostile or negative attitude toward a group of people based on generalizations. Prejudice can be based on race, ethnicity, religion, sexual orientation, or other factors. It can lead to discrimination, where people are treated differently because of their group membership. Prejudice is often learned from our environment. We may hear prejudiced comments from our parents, friends, or teachers. We may also see prejudice in the media. Prejudice can be difficult to change, even when we are presented with evidence that it is wrong. However, there are many things we can do to combat prejudice. We can educate ourselves about different cultures and groups. We can challenge prejudiced comments when we hear them. We can support organizations that are working to promote equality. It's important to remember that prejudice is a problem that affects us all. We all need to work together to create a more just and equitable society. Subtle Prejudice When we think of prejudice, we often think of overt acts like discrimination in hiring. But, did you know that subtle prejudice is more common and can be more harmful? Subtle prejudice can make targets feel uncomfortable or less effective. It can be directed towards women and minorities through hostile sexism or benevolent sexism. People may suppress their prejudices, but they may leak out when they are tired, angry, stressed, distracted, or inebriated. They may also express their prejudices in small ways they have little control over. People may struggle with the conflict between their urge to express prejudice and their need to maintain a positive self-concept. This can lead to justifying their prejudices with information that supports them. It's important to understand the harm caused by subtle prejudice. By recognizing and addressing our biases, we can create a more inclusive and equitable society. Stereotypes and Prejudice Stereotypes are generalizations about people based on their group membership. They can be harmful because they can lead to biased thinking and behavior. People often hold stereotypes about race, ethnicity, gender, social class, and other groups. These stereotypes can be based on hearsay, images disseminated by the mass media, or our own imaginations. Stereotypes can lead to biased decisions about people, such as denying parole or using physical restraint against them. They can have disastrous consequences, such as the shooting of Amadou Diallo. So, what can we do to challenge stereotypes and prejudice? We can start by recognizing and acknowledging our own biases and actively seeking out diverse perspectives. Attributions and Self-Fulfilling Prophecies Attributions are the explanations we give for people's behavior. They can be accurate or erroneous, functional or dysfunctional. In ambiguous situations, we tend to make attributions consistent with our prejudices. This can lead to self-fulfilling prophecies, where our expectations cause others to behave in ways that confirm our expectations. Examples of attributions and self-fulfilling prophecies 
If we assume a well-dressed black man in the park is unemployed, we may treat him with suspicion or hostility, making him feel uncomfortable. If we attribute a woman's success to hard work rather than ability, she may believe she's not as capable as men, discouraging her from taking on challenging tasks. If a teacher believes boys are better at math than girls, he may give boys more attention and encouragement in math class, making girls feel discouraged about pursuing math-related careers. Stereotype Threat Claude Steele's research shows that this phenomenon affects academic performance, even among well-prepared black students. Stereotype threat can hinder performance on standardized tests. Stereotype threat isn't limited to African Americans. It affects other groups like women in math and Latinos in verbal tests. Even white male engineering students can experience stereotype threat when faced with a stereotype about Asians excelling in math. Multiple social identities also play a role. Counteracting stereotype threat is possible through alternative mindsets. Reminding individuals of their academic abilities neutralizes stereotype effects. Causes of prejudice Prejudice is a complex issue. It can be caused by economic and political competition or conflict over mutually exclusive goals. For example, Anglo and Mexican American migrant workers have experienced prejudice due to a limited number of jobs. Similarly, Arabs and Israelis have a history of prejudice over disputed territory. In one experiment, Muzaffar Sharif and his colleagues found that competition led to prejudice. They randomly assigned people to two groups and put them in a competitive situation. Other causes of prejudice include displaced aggression, maintenance of status or self-image, dispositional prejudice, and conformity to existing social norms. Displaced aggression, the scapegoat theory. Displaced aggression is when people direct their anger towards an outgroup member, even if they're not responsible for their frustration. It can lead to violence, discrimination, and even genocide. There's evidence to support the theory. In one experiment, frustrated white students were more likely to shock a black accomplice than a white one. In another, frustrated college students directed aggression towards Jewish characters in their stories. It's important to be aware of the phenomenon and take steps to prevent it. We can identify and address root causes of frustration, promote understanding and tolerance between groups, create a sense of community and belonging and teach people how to manage their emotions in a healthy way. Self-justification and prejudice When we harm others, we tend to derogate them to rationalize our cruelty. By labeling a group as inferior, immoral, or subhuman, we can justify mistreatment. Low social status often correlates with increased prejudice. Individuals may seek superiority by demeaning downtrodden minority groups. Research shows that college women in low-status sororities express more prejudice. Authoritarian personalities are rigid, value conformity, and respect authority. They tend to harbor prejudice against various minority groups. Harsh childhood discipline and identification with prejudiced parents might contribute to this predisposition. Many people learn and adopt prejudices through conformity to cultural norms. Southern U.S. prejudice against blacks exemplifies this. Conformity to social norms can even explain patterns of racial segregation. Reducing prejudice In 1954, the U.S. Supreme Court declared that separate but equal schools were unequal. But changing attitudes towards integration was not easy. Social psychologists believed that changing attitudes would lead to changes in behavior. Information campaigns were not effective because people reject information that is inconsistent with their beliefs. The effects of equal status contact on attitudes have been studied. 
In a study of public housing projects, residents in the integrated project reported a greater positive change in their attitudes toward blacks after moving in. Equal status contact can increase understanding and decrease tension between different racial groups. It is important that equal status contact take place in a setting where both groups have equal status. So, let's strive for equal status contact to reduce prejudice and promote understanding. It's time for change. The Vicarious Effects of Desegregation The psychology of inevitability states that if we know that something is inevitable, we will start to change our attitudes about it. For example, if a white father knows that his daughter will have to go to an integrated school, he will start to re-examine his beliefs about black people. Positive experiences can speed up the process of dissonance reduction. If the daughter has pleasant and peaceful interactions with her black classmates, the father's prejudiced attitudes will begin to change. However, if people are given the impression that desegregation can be circumvented or delayed, there will be no attitude change and there may even be violence. The best way to produce eventual interracial harmony is to start with behavioral change, such as by integrating schools and workplaces. But all other things are not always equal. When economic conflict is present, prejudice can actually increase. When school desegregation results in a competitive situation, hostility towards whites can increase, especially among minority groups. Interdependence, a possible solution. The jigsaw method is a cooperative learning strategy that divides students into groups of six. Each group has students from different racial, ethnic, and gender groups. Each student is assigned one part of a larger task, and they must work together to learn all of the parts in order to complete the task. This encourages cooperation and learning from each other. Studies have shown that the jigsaw method is effective in reducing prejudice and increasing understanding between different groups. For example, Diane Bridgman's experiment showed that children who participated in the jigsaw classroom developed better empathy skills than those who did not. John McConaughey, a leading expert on race relations, has called cooperative learning the single most effective practice for improving race relations in desegregated schools. The jigsaw method is a promising approach.